reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 7 from the authorized version of the scriptures verses 5 and 6 for when we were come into Macedonia our flesh had no rest but we were troubled on every side with outward fightings within were fears nevertheless God nevertheless God that comforteth those that are cast down comforted us by the coming of Titus verse 7 and not by his coming only but by the constellation wherewith he was comforted in you when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoiced the more. You know, um, a soft word breaketh the bone. Sometimes that's all it needs. <laughs> oh, on this beautiful September 5th, 2022, the sun doth shine but there are storms. There are storms. Dark clouds. Dark clouds. Pray for us, brethren. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please, please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures that we will be looking at. Follow me along. Keep me accountable. Follow me along. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not taking anything out of context. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Follow me along, okay? In the scriptures. Don't just sit there on your duff. Follow me along. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures. We're going to begin in Psalm 144. <clears throat> Psalm 144, okay? Verses 1 on to verse 8. This is how we're going to begin today. Blessed be the Lord my strength. What is your strength? Your will, your determination? Hmm? Another person, spirit, soul, and body? What is your strength? What gets you up in the morning? Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war, and my fingers to fight. And that doesn't mean you be a keyboard warrior. Okay? <laughs> Some would take it to be such. My goodness. My goodness. And my fortress, ah, my goodness. What does it mean to be good? My goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. Hmm. This was the Psalm of David, obviously. But... Who is David's strength? Who is his goodness? Oh, oh! I, I, I can't tell you how many times uh, my wicked neighbor, uh, she said, I'm a good person. <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> so what is your goodness based off of? My goodness and my fortress. See, those of us who are truly saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, our goodness is not of ourselves. Any good in us is not of us. It is of the Lord. So what does it mean, what is good? Lord, and verse 3, look at verse 3. Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him? Or the son of man that thou makest account of him? We're dust. God made man because he felt like it. Revelation chapter 4, I believe that is. For, uh, well, instead of going off of memory, uh, Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. 
I believe it's verse 11. Yes. Yes, Revelation 4, 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things. Why? And for thy pleasure they are and were created. Like we've talked about before. Why did God make me? Why did God make this? Because he felt like it. Some people will look at you when you answer them like that, like you're being a smart Alex. <laughs> but you're not. So, and then you take them to Revelation 4.11. Okay? You'll see the light come on on some of them when you do that. But, Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him? Or the son of man that thou makest account of him? What are we? Are we good? Oh, depending on who you ask, yes. But what's the measure of that goodness? The reflection in the mirror. Man is like to vanity. His days are as a shadow. Note that word shadow. That passeth away. Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Making a reference on to the second coming. Okay, and also at Mount Sinai. Or Sinai, excuse me. Okay. Cast forth lightning, and scatter them. Shoot out thine arrows, and destroy them. Who? Destroy who? His enemies. Those whose goodness proceed of themselves. Send thine hand from above, rid me, and deliver me out of the great waters from the hand of strange children. And you remember in Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, waters are likened unto people. Okay? So send me out of great waters. Waters can also be likened unto uh, troubles, you know. You remember Peter, uh, when he, he took his eyes off Jesus and he saw the wind boisterous, he started to sink. He didn't go boom. <clears throat> Like a stone, okay, which Peter means stone, not rock, okay, but whoosh, goes right down. He started to sink, and what did he do? He said, Lord, save me! And the Lord grabbed him by the hand and said, Why did you doubt me? Verse 8 whose, whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a Right hand of falsehood. Right hand is synonymous with our Lord Jesus Christ. You will read in the scriptures that Jesus is sitting on the right hand of God. That doesn't mean you blessed south paws out there, left-handed people, are devils. That doesn't mean that at all. Okay, But right hand is synonymous with our Lord Jesus Christ sitting on the right hand of God. So when someone's right hand is the right hand of falsehood... Whose mouth speaketh vanity, meaningless, emptiness, pata, 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 nothing. Vanity of vanity. Fruitlessness uh, um, <laughs> of no benefit. Okay? Whose mouth speaketh vanity. And their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Hmm? Where are the gods that you have made you? Let them save you in the time of your trouble, huh? And you want to know what the, the, the sad part of this is? About this verse 8? About these strange children whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood? Look at that. Don't look at me. Look at that. Hmm? Strange children. From a strange father? What does it mean to be good? What does it mean to be good? You know, like when you, you go on your Google search about what a person is. What is a person? You'll get philosophy and vain deceit galore. When a person is defined in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 as a spirit, soul, and body. That's what a person is. Okay? But of course, Satan, ye hath God said. Okay? Google search what is good sometime. And again, you'll get 
philosophy and vain deceit. Galore. Piled on with shovels. <laughs> Stinking. But what does it mean to be good? What is good? I gotta, I gotta address this publicly. Four months ago, uh, due to a personal experience, the Lord had me to make videos exposing and talking about the heresy of the charismatic religion and faith. And um, I did so based upon a personal experience because uh, I used to know a charismatic who believed in some of the true doctrines, but at the core of what he was, was charismatic. It's like, oh boy, got some problems there, buddy. So I did, as the Lord commanded. And whoa, YouTube did not like that. And YouTube decided to target those videos. And it was, it was bizarre. Uh, the, the views, they would disip the views, they would take away the views, then they go up, then they go down, then they go up, then they go down. And it's like, wow, wow. I mean, it was, it was really bizarre. It was really, really bizarre. Really bizarre. And um, it's like, okay, whatever. I just continued doing what I was doing, and uh, whatever happened, happened. And uh, they eventually left me alone. And for four months. Um, and what brought that about, I don't know. Um, some have asked, it's like, well, Brad, if YouTube has a real problem with your videos, why don't they just remove them? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there's, uh, because number one, they're truth, okay? But then again, others who speak truth have had their videos removed. I don't know. I don't know. But recently, after four months of peace from the um, good people at YouTube, you know, the righteous people at YouTube, all of a sudden, the videos that the Lord had me to do on Islam were all of a sudden targeted again. So, oh boy. And then when you look online, there are very few of the Church of the Living God who target, oh, not target, excuse me, who care enough about the Muslim to warn them that, hey, you're, you're a pawn. You're going to be used of Satan and then Satan is going to destroy you for your trouble. YouTube, YouTube didn't like that. YouTube didn't like that. Oh, you got people like David Wood talking about the Muslims and uh, Stephen Anderson talking about the Muslims and uh, other guys out there going uh, talking about the Muslims. But they're not really saved, okay? Walter Veith did something on the Muslims which was absolutely wonderful. But then again, Walter Veith and that channel Amazing Discoveries is a player, a, a thing. For YouTube okay but yes YouTube and I, I did accordingly I, I made it known that I'm aware of what YouTube is doing okay uh, and hence they'll probably be doing it and they and they do this I'm not the only one this happens to this happens to other ones I, I remember even his holiness spake about it um, and some other people had uh, spake about it before in the past about how YouTube will do that and, and this is not anything new okay this is not anything new Apparently, those of you who like to piecemeal these videos, okay, yeah, because the Lord makes them the length that they are, and so you watch some of it one day, some of it another day, and some. A lot of you do that, as I understand. Uh, apparently, those aren't real views. Just, I don't know. I don't know. But YouTube really doesn't like people speaking the truth, number one, and speaking the truth about those whose ultimate end is to be destroyed by that man of sin, the son of perdition. It's sad. But see, case in point, what is good? And the people here at YouTube, and now granted, you got to remember, we are in their backyard. And we got to play by their rules. <laughs> but we are in their backyard. Amen. But see, what is good? What is the standard of goodness? Because, you know, here on YouTube, for example, you've seen those TikTok shorts, right? Some of those TikTok shorts that you see, borderline near pornography. 
But then again, you got to remember the sign of the times. What 20 years ago was considered hardcore pornography, today is considered softcore pornography. Okay? And, and, and those of you of the Church of the Living God who have to deal with those things, uh, you know, you see those uh, uh, TikTok things and these, they, they promote pedophilia through those things and also sodomy is okay uh, uh, here on YouTube and they have all this sodomite stuff and but see, that's good. But someone, or, and those of you of the Church of the Living God, who want to warn the wicked, who want to warn the lost people, that's evil, according to YouTube. A good example. It's a good example. What is the measure of goodness to them? I, I was made aware of a uh, dear Hamite man who accused YouTube of playing favorites, which they do, and also being racist. Yeah, that is true. But see, it's not against the color of the skin that YouTube is racist about. It's the color of green that they're racist about. Okay? But there again, that's a good example. That's a good example. What is good? See, unto those here on YouTube, it's good to promote sodomy. To be okay with uh, borderline pornographic images on TikTok that they promote. And uh, borderline uh, pedophilia with these young girls doing these dumb things and wearing these dental floss things. And that's good. But people warning about the truth, about the times coming, to prepare for the times coming from the Vatican that they're sending upon us, being allowed of by the Lord Jesus Christ to do so for judgment. That's evil to them. And that's something. So what is good? This is going to be a two-part video. Part one of this video is going to be done today, the 5th of September, Monday. Part two is going to be done on Wednesday. Okay? Not going to do sit here for six and a half hours and then upload them, blah, 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 blah. Not going to do it like that. Okay? This is how the Lord leads. But what is it? What is good? What is good? Turn in your authorized version to the scriptures, of the scriptures, to the beginning, to the beginning. Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 5. In the beginning, God. Stop. In the beginning, God. We've talked about this before. You roll and flop yourself out of bed. In the beginning, God. You, know, you wipe the sleep from your eyes, your one bloodshot eyes, like, Lord, thank you. You have given me rest. You have given me sleep. Thank you, Lord. For Thank you for the bed. Thank you for whatever, you know, the clothing. Thank you for the food. Thank you, Lord. Please forgive me. You know, in the beginning, God, okay, created the heaven and the earth. God. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And this is not in any way denoting a person. This is the Godhead that we're looking at. But notice here about, and the earth was without form and void. And this is where they come, a lot of heretics, like those at Shepherd's Chapel, and some others come up with that gap theory to try to say that the scriptures prove that the earth is billions. It's nonsense. But, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Darkness. Darkness. Before there was light, there was what? Darkness. Isn't that interesting? And when you look at darkness, you can also, uh, you can also tie into that uh, go to John chapter 3, verses 5 and 8, okay? Because in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was out form and void. And darkness, darkness is first mentioned before any light is mentioned, isn't it? Isn't that interesting? John chapter 3, verses 5 on to verse 8. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, 
except a man be born of water. Now, Catholics and Charismatics say this is, they go to this for proof that you got to be baptized in order to be saved. That's one of the conditions. This is not what is being talked about. Except a man be born of water. You know, okay. Uh, women, when you have are with child, what happens when that baby going to come out of the oven? Your water breaks. Okay? That's what's being talked about. Not water baptism. Okay? Okay? Sorry, dear Catholic. Dear Kara Catholic, Charismatic, Pentecostal. Sorry. It's not talking about water baptism. Uh, except a man be born of water. You know, water breaks. And of the capital S, denoting God, our Father himself, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, and the Lord is that spirit. Okay, capital S. And of the spirit, he cannot into, enter into the kingdom of God. And within scripture, kingdom of God can mean kingdom of heaven. And kingdom of heaven, like we've talked about before, always means the actual physical, literal kingdom. Okay, but kingdom of God can mean can be a reference unto the kingdom of heaven, but most of the time it is talking about the spiritual aspect, the kingdom of God, and that's defined by context. You know, like like in the previous video, the analogy of the sandwich. Okay, you got the bread, you got the bread, and then you got the stuff in the middle. Okay, context. Okay, so kingdom of God, spiritual. That which is born of flesh is flesh like so many christians who say well i'm a good person like so many wicked devils out there i'm a good person what's the measure of good to you dear friend oh boy yeah that which is born of flesh is flesh and that is why all fakes all coadjutors worship flesh because that's all their faith and their religion is about flesh okay that which is born of the flesh is flesh it's man okay there is different types of flesh absolutely but in the context of what he is talking about you know except a man okay that's what he's talking about okay and that which is born of the spirit capital s noting God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, one God comprised of spirits, one body, okay? And that which is born of the Spirit, born of God, is Spirit, okay? Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest not the sound thereof, but canest, but canest not tell whence it cometh. And whither it goeth, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Meaning, we live day by day. Boast not thyself of the morrow, for thou knowest not what the morrow may bring forth. Let another man praise thee, not thine own self. And be careful with other men praising thee, that it don't go to your head and you puff your chest out thinking you're a great one. Okay? But we live day by day. We don't know what the day brings tomorrow. We don't know. Right? We don't know. We don't know. But see, we're all born sinners because of Adam and Eve. We're all born, even though the sun is out, we're all born into darkness. A little child has to be taught what is good. And what is good? Okay? Now there are some instinctual things that we have, which we are going to address in this video. But a little infant, a child, brought into the world, through the matrix, born of water, they don't know either good or evil. Don't do that. Hence, they're innocent. Until they become aware and pick up tricks, as it were. Okay, and also another reference on this, really quickly, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, okay, 1 Corinthians, not 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 44 under verse 46, Paul talking about, um, you know, the resurrection, the redemption of the purchased possession, 
If his son, a natural body, this sagging skin suit that we're in, we're all in, okay? It has raised a spiritual body that eats because it wants to eat. That can go through walls that could whoop, appear and disappear just like that. Like the body of our Lord Jesus Christ after his death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Yes, it is sown a natural body. It has raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, one that we're born with, okay? And there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul, made of the dirt. The last Adam, our Lord Jesus Christ, was made a quickening spirit. Okay, see how John chapter 3 and what we're reading ties in together? You see that? About being born again. Okay? Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual. Darkness. Okay? But that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. And notice here, now go back to Genesis chapter 1. Go back to Genesis chapter 1. With what we just read, it is born first uh, natural and then spiritual. First comes the natural, then the spiritual. Okay? Well, let's read verse 2 again. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And, and look at this. And the Spirit, capital S, of God, Moved upon the face of the waters. Darkness. So we're born into darkness. And what is darkness? It's a, it's a color, a pigmentation of colorlessness. Uh, black, right? Right? Dark. What say it the scriptures? Go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 about this darkness. We're born into darkness. Okay? First, first, comes the natural. We're born into darkness. And then the Spirit of God moves. Okay? Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10, on to verse 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Not strong in yourself, not strong in the sagging skin suit, but be strong in the Lord. <coughs> And in the power of his might. You know that verse in scripture that the Christians have trivialized and make merchandise of? I can do all things through Christ whom strengtheneth me. Amen. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God. Everything. You don't put on the helmet save to gird your loins with truth. You don't take up the shield without putting on the helmet. Okay? You don't have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel without being armed with the sword. You understand? Okay? So, put on the whole armor of God, the whole sandwich, that ye may be able, able to stand Against the wiles of the devil. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Oh, how soon hi, can we forget that? How soon can we forget that? Okay. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places like the people in the upper echelons in YouTube. Like the people in the upper echelons of the American government in the Vatican. And we, being the body of Christ, the church of the living God, we, we little people. The ants are feeble folk having no guide or ruler or overseer prepare their meat in the summer but we do have an overseer and a ruler our Lord Jesus Christ you know this is a rebuke for me too 
because uh, there was a, a little young boy that I was really harsh on. Um, and I got to remember, uh, well, I do not repent for what I said about a certain young little boy. I do not repent of it. I have to realize that it's not that, uh, it's not that flesh, flesh and blood, okay? It's not that flesh and blood, okay, that the problem is. It's the spirit that is guiding that. Okay? We have to remember that. The flesh and blood that I am struggling against at this very moment, it's not that. It's the spirit because we are engaged in spiritual battle. We've got to remember, hi, I have to remember that. So do you. Okay? Now, and now look, go to, and because we've got to remember, we have to remember, we have to remember, Ephesians chapter 2, slap yourself awake, verses 1 on to verse 3, and you hath he quickened, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, you're lost. Your goodness is of yourself, and that goodness of yours is going to lead you to hell. Okay? But we, and because of that, you are dead in your trespasses and sins. You have no life. Okay? But you come to the Lord on His terms, and He saves you by His grace through your faith. Um, he makes you alive. He quickens you. Wherein in time past He walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The prince of the power of the air. The prince of the power of TV. The prince of the power of the airwaves. The prince of the power of the air amongst all the lost. Who reject the true gospel. I'm saved because I believe and I'm a good person. And I'll kill you if you tell me otherwise. Really? You ever... Never talk to some of these professed good people? Well, what makes you a good person? It's, I liken it similar to when you run across the Catholic Trinitarian, Trinitarians are Catholics, and they say, and you say to them, well, Jesus is the Father. They, they get out the gun, they're going to shoot you. They're going to put your head on the chopping block. Ooh. The doctrine of their own goodness, their own self-righteousness. Whoa. Don't step on that one. You know, those who pat themselves on their back, on their back, you know. Among whom also we all, every single one of us who are saved, had, past tense, our conversation in time past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature, by nature, that which is born in the flesh is flesh. Okay? First comes darkness. And we're by nature children of wrath, even as others. Well, it is born a natural body. And by nature, children of wrath. Do you need any more proof that flesh is sinful? Do you need any more proof? Okay? So, the prince of the power of the air. 2 Corinthians. We're going over familiar verses, but we have to. We have to. I don't know who is going to see this. And now, since YouTube is targeted, use it yours truly, because the Lord led me to speak out against the Muslim. Not against, but to warn the Muslims. Uh, so, YouTube's going to start paying attention to me. And hence, when that happens, these videos aren't going to be well, you know, aren't going to be known. They're not, YouTube isn't going to do anything with them because they're targeting them. That's what happens. Unless you're someone who has 50,000 subscribers and millions of views, th that's a cash cow to them. Even though that channel might not be monetized, there's still, it's still a cash cow to YouTube. So, Second Corinthians, and Bob, shut up. Go to where, go to that lake of fire already, okay? Just shut up, Bob. Go away. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 4. 
Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Okay? Like a brother said to me in an email yesterday, keep looking up. Amen, brother. Amen, brother. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully like so many people do. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Walk your talk. You know, you claim to be saved. You're saved, huh? Yeah, if you're saved. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You profess that you know God, but in works you deny Him. And you're saved. <laughs> Need to consider. But, let's keep reading. But if our gospel, death, burial, and resurrection, repentance toward God, and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, that those who are in darkness. In whom the little g, God of this world, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light, lowercase l, light of the glorious gospel, good news, of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine onto them. Hmm. Should shine onto them. And of course, and of course, and, uh, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Okay? Satan has blinded the, mind of the minds of them which believe not. How? We shall be as God, so we can we're going to look at that too, by the way. You're a good person. I'm a good person by the standard given to me by Satan. Which, when you get right down to it, these people who go about, I'm a good person. Well, what is the measure of your goodness? What is the measure of your goodness? You see, what does Satan do? What does Satan do? Okay, the little G God of this world. The prince of the power of the air, what does he do? Familiar? You ought to have this known. This ought to be engraved in your mind. Uh, Luke chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 7. Satan tempting the flesh that Jesus Christ is come in. Okay? And the devil taking him up into a high mountain. Shoot unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou, if thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. All shall be thine. Hmm. Yes, the devil, Lucifer, and of course, the devil, Lucifer, Satan, one being himself. There are some out there who like to say to say that Lucifer and Satan are two different beings. No, they're one being. Okay, uh, they're they're one being. Uh, Revelation chapter twelve, verses nine and ten, real quickly. Okay, Revelation chapter twelve, verses nine and ten, and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceived the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ Christ means anointed one for the accuser of our brethren that's what Satan means, an accuser. Okay? For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Okay? And those of the world, the little G God of this world, the prince of the power of the air, and those who follow him. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verses 42 and on to verse 45. 
Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. I love Jesus. Which Jesus? There is another Jesus talked about in Scripture. Okay? There is another Jesus. The Jesus of the Scriptures is, number one, God the Father. Number two, he has different ages, different dispensations in how in which men are made right with him. Okay? Okay? The God of the Scriptures, the Jesus of the Scriptures, is going to say, come up hither and redeem his body, the Church of the Living God. That, they, you know, caught up. People erroneously refer to it as the pre-tribulation rapture. Okay? So that is the God of the authorized version of the scriptures. The Jesus uh, of the scriptures. Okay? He is God the Father. He is disp dispensational. He is going to take out his body before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? He saves us in this dispensation by his grace through our faith. And those who preach works of the law in this dispensation speak to you of words of no profit. Prophet. Okay? That's the Jesus of today. The other Jesus is a Jesus that you got to go through the great tribulation. You're not once saved, always saved. And see, that's another thing about the Jesus that we preach to you of the church of the living God. The Jesus of the scriptures. The Jesus of today. Okay? The Jesus of today. Because when he comes back, he's going to be the lion of the tribe of Judah. Under the law, he was the lamb. He was the lamb. But when he comes back, he's going to be the lion of the tribe of Judah. Okay? That's what I mean. But see, there's only one God. There's only one Jesus. But see, he has different ways in which he deals with man in different ages. And within this dispensation, when he saves you, you're once saved, always saved, sealed until the day of redemption. The other Jesus that is preached unto you, you're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble, which they call the Great Tribulation. You're not once saved, always saved. Okay? you got to keep the law to be saved today. Okay? All right? That is the other Jesus that so many of these Christians preach unto you. Okay? If God were your father, you would love me. Which Jesus do you love? Which Christ do you love? Okay? For I proceeded forth and came from him. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. you got to remember, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. There's only one God. Okay? The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. Okay? But God deals with man differently in dispensations. Okay? The way that we are made right and saved today is different than under the law. Okay? And if people would do that, rightly divide the word of truth, so much of this nonsense would be cleared up. But then again, they got to be saved first. Okay? Let's continue. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. I, 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 me, 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 me. It's all about, the world revolves around you. Okay? He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. Why? Because there is no truth in him. And who is truth? What is truth? Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by him. If you're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, truth lives within you. Okay? When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is the Father, he is a liar and the Father of it. And because I tell you the truth, Believe me not. He was a murderer from the beginning. That old serpent. Go back to Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Okay? 
Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5. We've gone over this plenty of times before, but in light of certain circumstances, we have to go over them again, deal with it. Okay? Now the serpent was more subtle, sly, smooth, than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Sure did. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Sure did. And a woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it. God never said this part of it. Neither shall ye touch it lest ye die. We just saw it. God never said that. Such a, the sandwich, the context, okay? And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For in the day that ye eat thereof, God doth know. Well, let me, for, uh, oh, excuse me, I messed that up. I was trying to do that verbatim from memory. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. He shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, before this, man was innocent, perfect, sinless. They knew only what was good. And what is good? And what is good? What is good? What is good? See, Satan's lie to Eve was what? God said, don't eat it in a tree. You got all this to choose from. Just don't eat that one. What does Satan do? Eat that one. There must be something special about that tree. Don't do what God said. So, what God said to Adam and Eve, which is the first dispensation. The first dispensation was all works. They didn't need faith because they could see God. He walked in the garden. Okay? All right? They didn't need faith. They could see God in the Garden of Eden. Okay? But, God said, hey, eat, eat all this. But th this, this one tree, don't, don't, don't eat that. Satan comes along. Did he say that? Yeah, go ahead, eat that. Eat that one that he said not to do. And he said that unto Adam and Eve. Why? For their own good. Satan comes along and says, hey, you do what God said not to do. Then you'll know. You'll be your own God, and you'll be able to know what is good and evil. And what is good? Luke chapter, not Amos, Luke chapter 18. Or let's start, uh, Matthew chapter 19, excuse me. One verse. Matthew chapter 19, verse 17. You know, the rich young ruler? Let's read verse 16 and 17. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life good master and he said unto him why callest thou me good there is none good but one that is God but if thou wilt enter into life keep the commandments and this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. But what is going on here? The rich young ruler didn't see God the Father standing in front of him. He only saw good master. Okay? Like Peter said, uh, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou art the Christ. Thou hast the words of life. And in John chapter, what is it? John chapter 1? John chapter 1? Okay, Nathaniel, John chapter 1, what he says of our Lord. <coughs> yeah. Yes, Nathaniel, the rich young ruler, goes up to him, good master, 
because he only saw a genie in the bottle, someone who could give him what he needs for this present life, even though he sought for eternal life. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? And what does Jesus say? There is none good but one, that is God. And Jesus plainly referred to himself as God. He called himself God. He didn't say, I am God, but he said, I am, which is good enough. That's all he had to say. He made himself to be God because he is God the Father. And the Jews took uh, offense to that. But see, this uh, rich young ruler, he didn't see. He didn't see that. Why? Because he was in darkness. And if you were to read in Matthew chapter 19, he loved the things of this world. He had great possessions. And Jesus put his finger on that one thing, that one thing he lacked. And he said, get rid of it, sell everything you have and come and follow me. And he went away sorrowful because why? He had great riches. And he didn't want to give them up. The rich young ruler didn't see God. Their promised Mashiach, the Messiah before them, who is God the Father. But Nathaniel, in John chapter 1, verses uh, 47 on to verse 51, Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him, and saith to, of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathaniel saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. And, and, look at the, and look at this. Look at this. In comparison with the rich young ruler, Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. Well, the rich young ruler only saw a good master. Nathaniel. Okay? Now, this rich young ruler obviously was privy to the miracles, as all Israel was, was privy to the miracles that our Lord Jesus Christ was doing in offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews while they were under the law. Okay? Obviously. As well as Nathaniel. Okay? But our Lord said to Nathaniel, you know, before that Philip called thee when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. And Nathaniel is like, Nathaniel answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Look at how Jesus responds. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Wow. Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he said, and he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And yet the rich young ruler see the difference but what is good we we don't need to uh we don't need to continue i uh, yeah we do yeah we do let's go to luke 18 luke 18 luke chapter 18 luke 18 we want verses 18 on to verse 20 and a certain ruler asked him saying good master there it is again what shall i do to inherit eternal life and jesus said unto him why callest thou me good None is good, save one, that is God. See, Jesus is not disassociating himself as God because he is God the Father. No. He's saying, why are you calling me good? And why aren't you referring to me as son of David, king of Israel? Like Nathaniel did. Rabbi, thou art the son of God. God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Why aren't you, why aren't you addressing me as that? Because the rich young ruler didn't see that. Why? Because he was in darkness. Because he loved the things of this world. He loved what Satan gave him. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. Let's read 21 and 22. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. I keep, I keep the law, therefore I'm, I'm good. And he said, Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. And that's the most, that's the key ingredient, the most important thing. 
Sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have tre treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. All this will I give thee, if you fall down and worship me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. What is good? What is good? God. Jesus is God the Father. Don't let people, especially these Trinitarians, come along and, with verse 19 here and try to preach to you a satanic three-person trinity. Okay? That's satanic. That's nonsense. Okay? It's not truth. Okay? What that was as the rich young ruler didn't have eyes to see. He was in darkness. And he only saw a meal t uh, someone who could be a meal ticket onto him. Okay? That's all. Now back in Genesis chapter 3, again, verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So God gives to Adam and Eve what is good, himself, what he said. Satan comes along and says, do contrary to what God said, and you'll be able to make your own choices. When at the beginning it wasn't meant to be like that. We weren't robots, but we were innocent because we knew at the very beginning, we as man knew what was good. God. Only God. But see, what the, the, the thing that Satan did can be summed up quite simply in Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. And hence, all these people who say they're a good person, I'm good because I'm of the chosen ones. I'm good because I keep kosher. I'm good because I keep the law. I'm good because I do this. I'm good because I give alms to the poor. So your goodness is from yourself. I'm doing that to win favor of God. Um, good luck. Good luck. You're falling short of his grace, dear friend. But Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 on to verse 23. And this is what Satan did in the Garden of Eden. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. God clearly said, don't eat of that tree. You have all this, don't eat that. Satan comes along, da 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 Do what God said not to do. And your eyes will be opened. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You can make your own, you can be your own god. The standard of goodness is a, based upon what you judge as good. Want to them that call evil good and good evil. Now put darkness for light, and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are prudent. That woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes. Yeah, woe unto them. And prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, the wine that comes from mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. That's essentially what Satan did. Because you got to remember, as it says in Isaiah chapter 14, uh, uh, verses 12 under 15, Satan wants to be like God. I will be, there are five times Satan says, I will, mimicking God, okay? Satan, I will be like the Most High. So when you got someone whose standard of goodness is themselves or measure their goodness by another man who will die who compare themselves among themselves the scriptures say they are not wise so then your goodness is of man and satan was cursed to eat dust all the days of his life and we are dust and satan savoreth the things that be of man flesh not the things that be of god So what is good? Yourself? You're a good person. You are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father you will do. Now go back to Genesis chapter 1. Okay? 
Genesis chapter 1. Thought I forgot, didn't you? Verse 3. Okay. Let's read verses 1 on to verse 3, okay? In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. That's a capital S, okay? And God said, spake, word. That's Jesus Christ, okay? And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Let there be light. First comes darkness, then comes light. God said, let there be light. And there was light. Second Corinthians now, chapter 4, verses 5 and 7. You see how we did that there? Huh? Second Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 7. For we preach not ourselves, like certain King James Bible believer, believers do. They preach themselves, that they're the only ones, okay? They are in the, them and their idols that they have made, okay? For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Because the flesh profiteth nothing. Okay? The scripture plainly says that Jesus Christ, who, you know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, was made in the likeness of sinful flesh. The script deal with the scriptures, which a lot of people don't. Okay? But see, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That because this, you know, the thermal everything breaks down, thermodynamics, everything decays in time. Okay? Christ is the one who gives us life. Christ is the one who makes us alive. Christ is the one who quickens us and our mortal bodies upon our beds that we can get up in the morning and that kind of stuff, okay? It's Christ, all right? And not of us. And not of us, okay? 1 John chapter, uh, not 1 John, not yet. John chapter 1. John chapter 1, Okay? John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Verses 1 on to verse 14. In the beginning was the capital W word. Beginning of seven time capital word that, uh, the, that, that appears in scripture. And in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The word. God said. There's the word. God said. God spoke. There's the word. And what the, God said, let there be light. Okay? The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light in the eyes, When if you've ever seen a dead body, a corpse, there's no light in their eyes, even of lost people, okay? And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the capital L light, which appears four times. And incidentally, little boy, I made mention of that long before your master did. So go pound some sand. Okay? And the same came for a witness to bear witness of the capital L light. For all men through him might believe. He was not that capital L light, but was sent to bear witness of that capital L light. Capital L light, our Lord Jesus Christ. That was the true light, which lighteth, lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. He spake the world in the, the word, 
Okay? He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, the Jews, the Hebrews. Not Hamites, not Japhethites. Okay? And his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. You are because you say you are. Huh? You're saved because you just believe. You're a good person because you say you are. Because you are the measure of your goodness. Come on now. Nor of the will of man, but of God. And here's something that a lot of people, even the most highly intellectual King James Bible believing Christians can't understand. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory. The glory as, the, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay? 1 John. 1 John chapter 1. 1 John Chapter 1. First John chapter 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, of the Word, capital W, of life. For the life was manifest, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and shew unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifested on to us. Okay, In the beginning in Genesis, God, the Spirit of God, and God said, that's the Godhead, not the Trinity. Okay, No persons are mentioned. A person is a spirit's own body. Okay? That's the Godhead. Okay, First three uh, verses of Scripture. Okay, That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all, uh, all sin. Notice it doesn't say flesh. Well, you need flesh to have blood. Really? What about the miracle in, uh, in Egypt where he turned the water into blood? Eh, no. No. See, heretics and people who worship themselves, who worship man, will do anything they can to justify the worship of the flesh. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Well, I'm a good person. I'm not a sinner. Yeah. Yeah. You can kill anyone who'd say otherwise. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You come to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name, and he save you by his grace through your faith. If we say we have not sinned, well, I don't sin anymore. We make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Okay? And of course, John chapter 8, just one verse. John chapter 8, verse 12. John chapter 8, verse 12. Not where are you going, Brad? Pick your part. John chapter 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am, okay, remember, remember with the I am's, in, especially in John, get your little pen. Oh, I am, okay. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now that's pretty simple, isn't it? Go back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. 
And God said, let there be lights. And there was light. God said, spoke the word, Jesus. And speaking, God said, speaking is associated with light, what we just saw. Now verses 4 and 5. And God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. You're either light or you're either dark. There's no middle ground. There is no option C. It's either or. It's A or B. Okay? Light or darkness. No shade of gray. And God called the light day. And our Lord Jesus Christ is referred to as the day star, which the Bibles like to attribute to Satan, an angel of light that transforms himself into an angel of light. And God, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. The evening and the morning were the first day, a 24-hour period. So what is good? God is good. God is good. He is, he is what is good. That is all. And now, after this, uh, well, let's continue. Uh, Isaiah 45. God is good. Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45. I almost got ahead of myself. Isaiah 45. Verses 5 on to verse 7. I am the Lord. And there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all things. God creates evil. But God is good. Yes, he is. But God is righteous, and God is a God of judgment. And if you do that which is evil, you go contrary to the scriptures of what God has said to do, he's a righteous judge. He's a just judge he's going to do bring upon you evil for doing what he said not to do god is a god of justice deuteronomy chapter 32 deuteronomy chapter 32 and there are those out there well the god of the old testament is not the god of the new testament one god the god of the old testament is the god of the new testament yes one god can the spirit soul and body our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Father who is the soul, the Word which is the Word made flesh, the body, and the Spirit which is the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? What changed the dispensation? How someone is made right with God in the dispensation they're in. That's what changed. Because you read in Revelation the sweet, loving Jesus that Christianity preaches to you about killing people. And kill them with death. Yeah. Yeah. And sitting there and having people tormented in front of him. Yeah. Christianity preaches to you another Jesus. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verses 39 on verse 43. See now that I, even I am he. And there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say I live forever. If I whet my glittering sword, meaning taking vengeance, judgment. Because remember what it says say here in verse 35? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Okay? Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. Okay? Okay? God is judge, not we ourselves. It's not up to us to get even, okay? If I wet my glittering sword, and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies, and will reward them that hate me. 
I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives, from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Yes, God is a God of justice. God is a God of judgment. Okay? He is. Even in this dispensation. You read about that in Romans chapter 2. Okay? Okay? God is a God of recompense. Both in the noun form and in the S form, which is a verb. Okay? God is a God of recompense. You mess with God, sooner or later, He's going to mess with you. You deny God all your life, guess what? You're going to have to give an account of that to Him at the great white throne of judgment. Okay? And verse 43. Rejoice, O ye nations, with His people, for He will avenge the blood of His servants, and will render vengeance to His adversaries, and will be merciful unto His land and to His people. Okay? And also, Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3. Come on, fingers, work with me. Amos chapter 3. Amos is after Joel. Amos chapter 3, verses 5 on to verse 8. Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it? The Lord is, has allowed Satan to do what he has done in America. Okay? The Lord himself hath not done it, but the Lord has, is allowing Satan to destroy America. He's allowing it to happen. Okay? Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And look at verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Now think about that. Think about that. Can two walk together except they be agreed? How can you walk with the Lord Jesus Christ if you think you're a good person? How can you walk with the Lord when you think that in and of yourself you are good? How can you do that? But see, you could walk with the devil who said, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Okay? You can walk with Satan and be agreed with him because, hey, you are your own God. You know what is good and evil. See how that works? See how that works? Now, after, after the Garden of Eden, the very first dispensation in Scripture, the Garden of Eden, was all works. You didn't need faith because they could see God. It was all works. Don't eat of the tree. They ate of the tree. Dispensation ended. Uh, animal was skinned so coats could be given onto them, and, uh, you know, stuff to cover them. Sent them out of the Garden of Eden. End of the first dispensation. The second dispensation of Scripture began, the time of the patriarchs. Similar to this time, but different. Very different. Why? Because within that dispensation of the patriarchs, the faith was in what God was going to do. The law was not given yet. But then you'll say, some will say like, well, the law was written on our hearts. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. The written law was not given yet, which contained the ordinances of how to be right with God during that dispensation. The animal sacrifices, the Levitical priesthood, that and so on and so on. Okay, There were sacrifices made within the time of the patriarchs. Okay, There were, but more so for thank offerings, not according to a prescribed law. Okay? It was a different dispensation. Similar to ours, but different because it was what God and what God was going to do, and we're going to prove that. Romans chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 16. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. 
And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Okay? For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So what type of law is he talking about? He's talking about the law of the Old Testament. Okay? Okay, and we're gonna we're gonna look at this, okay? For when the Gentiles which have not the law, Gentiles, gen now Gentiles meaning someone who is not a Jew, a Hebrew, but also in context someone who is not saved, okay? A Gentile, okay? But a Gentile, for when the Gentiles which have not the law, what law? Did not the Gentiles have laws? The Babylonians, they had they had laws. Yes, they did. So what law is being talked about? The law of God. Okay? The law of God. That's what's being mentioned, okay? For when the Gentiles which have not the law, the law of God, the law of Moses, you know, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are law unto themselves, which shew the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience, also bearing witness and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another hmm. in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel so what does this mean looking at verse 14 for when the Gentiles which have not the law they had their laws but not the law of God do by nature the things contained in the law. These having not the law are a law unto themselves. You know, in the Levitical law, for an example. For an example. Uh, an example here, okay? Um, where, where am I? I just lost my place, okay? Uh, uh, one second. One second. Oh, okay. Yes. The Gentiles, under the Old Testament, the law wasn't given to them. But they had their own laws. So like the Babylonians, they had their own laws, their judges and stuff like that, but not the law of God, okay? But man is born with certain things written on their hearts. For example, even though, even though there are those out there who, and uh, note here uh, in verse 15, which shew the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience, their conscience, also bearing witness and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another their conscience their conscience there are those out there who say you are born without a conscience that's not true what can you do to your conscience oh that's uh first timothy uh uh first timothy chapter four first timothy chapter four there is no such thing as a killed conscience these stone cold Deathly murderers, they haven't killed their conscience. They have a conscience. Because when it comes to their own self-preservation, you'll see their conscience in action. But what have they done? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 2. Now the capital S spirit, and the Lord is that spirit, speaketh expressly that in the latter time some, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, God's not mad at you. God's a, uh, God loves you unconditionally. You're a good person. Okay? Some shall depart from this, the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And when you do that, speaking lies and in, in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You know, you take a, a, a nice ribeye steak, you know, one of them, uh, inch one or a New York ribeye which is can get that big and you throw it on the grill and you let it sear itself and then you flip it over and it retains all those juice. that's searing that's what someone can do to their conscience no one is born without a conscience like I said when it comes to someone who someone they say oh well, I killed my conscience no you can't do that they have seared it because when it comes to their self preservation you'll see their conscience spring to action Okay? That's not what that's talking about. You cannot kill your conscience. You can sear it. You can sear it. But you don't kill it. What is this talking about? 
People are born with certain things that they instinctively know is right and wrong. Instinctively. Such as Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20. Before the law. Okay? Here's an example. The perfect example. Okay? Genesis chapter 20. People who are, well, you just said, well, Brad, you said infants are, uh, ch excuse me, children are born uh, innocent. Yeah, they're born innocent. They don't know good or evil. That's why when before a child reaches that age of accountability, whatever that age is, they're going to go up in the redemption of the purchase of uh, purchase possession. Okay? Okay, yes. But children, inst even when they get to a certain age, they know certain things are right and wrong. Where does that come from? The world themselves? No. Certain things are written on their hearts. Instinctively. Even the coldest criminals, even the coldest murderers, like the guy from Blackpool, even they know murder is wrong. That adultery is wrong. That lying is wrong. Okay? Those principal things, they know that instinctively. Because it was lies that got man kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Okay? But Genesis chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 7. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelt between Kadesh and Shore and sojourned in Gerar. And Abram said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech king of Gerar sent and took Sarah. Now Abraham goes on to say, Well, she is actually my sister, my half-sister. But see, the fact is that Abraham should have said, This is my wife. Instead, he said, well, it's not, it, it's a half true. It's a half true. Okay. Abraham spoke a half. It was, it was true. Half, yes. This is my sister. This is my sister. My half sister. Okay. But he said that in order to protect himself. That self-preservation thing, okay. It's like, hey, this is my wife. Okay. That you you you're gonna go through me. You're gonna get. You wanna touch my wife? You gotta go through me. Okay, that's what he should have done. But yeah, this is my wife. You t you you're gonna go through me, Jack. You want my wife? You come. You're gonna go through me. Get ready. But no, to protect his own rear end, he said that. And what happened? Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said unto him, Behold, thou art but the dead man for the woman which thou hast taken. For she is a man's wife. Abimelech didn't say that she, uh, Abraham did not say she was his wife. And Abimelech said, But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my sister? And she, even she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. Now hold on. How did Abimelech know that it was wrong to take another man's wife? We just read it in Romans chapter 2, by the way. How did he know? How did he know? Abraham and Sarah, they they lied. I, I, yeah, Abraham goes on to say, well, she is actually my half-sister. He should have been, hey, this, this is my wife. This is my wife. Don't mess with her. You mess, if, my, if someone, for example, someone wants to mess with my wife, they're going to have a fight on their hands. Okay? You want to play around with my wife? You you gonna have one? Uh, you're gonna have a war on your hands, pal. Okay? You want to mess with my wife? That's what Abraham should have been like. My wife. Don't you? you, you come on, pal. You know? But he didn't. And why didn't he do that? To protect himself. See? Abraham, who is the father of many nations, we are considered the seed of Abraham. Yes, we are. He was just a man. Who sinned? Okay. And Abimelech's like, hey, Lord, come on. 
I didn't know. I didn't know. I mean, hey, if I knew that was his wife, I would. I wouldn't have taken her. How do? How would Abimelech known that? This is before the law. Because man is born with th certain things already in their hearts that they know is evil, and what they know is good. Result of the fall. Because uh, before the fall, man only knew what was good, see? And because of that transgression, that fall of man, man is born into sin. Man is born knowing that they can judge for themselves. Thanks, Adam and Eve. You really made it good for all of us. Okay? Verse 6, and look at how God responds. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart. In other words, yeah, you didn't know. I know, you didn't know. For this, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me, therefore I suffered, therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. It's like, yeah, I know you did that in innocency. I know, you didn't know. That's why I didn't let you touch her. Now the warning. Verse 7. Now therefore restore the man his wife. For he is a prophet. And also the very first appearance of the word prophet right there. So the word Hebrew appears first to who? Abraham. And the word prophet appears also on, in context to who? Abraham. Okay. Now therefore restore the man his wife. For he is a prophet. And he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. There was no, the law wasn't given yet. But see, we are born in sin because of the fall. And because of that disobedience in the garden, we grow up that we have now the ability to know what is good and evil. But see, you go outside, and what is good? God is good. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God is good. And the scriptures, the authorized version, that is what is good. But Christianity and the devil tells you, you, you are good. And they give you like the uh, they give you things like the Quran and the uh, and the Catechism and Christian Science and the Book of Mormon, a Moron and the Secret and all these things written by man, hence written by the devil, to tell you that you are good because you do something in your own power. What is good? But see, because of the fall. We are now able to judge, not to judge, but to know what is good and what is evil. And what is good to you? What's the measure of your goodness? I think we have already categorically proven that what the scriptures call good is none but one. God! And we're going to look about that in the next video uh, about, you know, a good man about the two appearances that that appears in the New Testament. We'll look at the, we'll deal with that later. But what is good? It is God that is good. He is good. Okay? Now go to Psalm 14. Psalm 14. Okay? Psalm 14. Psalm 14. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God, but the God that you are. You can be as God, knowing good and evil. So, the measure and standard of goodness is judged by yourself. You are your own God. You're a good person because you say you are, because you do X, Y, and Z. Apart from the true God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ? I don't think so, buddy. Woman. Okay? But see, and also here we see the definition of a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. No. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. 
No, not one. By themselves. See, these lost people, I'm a good person. They don't follow God. They're not saved. And apart from God, you have no goodness. Your goodness is as a fading flower. It's like a breeze that uh, passes away. Okay? <laughs> your goodness is nothing. Hence, you're not good. And Christianity banks on you're a good person. God loves you unconditionally. Really? Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge? who eat up my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord. There were they in great fear, for God is in the generation of the righteous. Ye have shamed the counsel of the poor, because the Lord is his refuge. And of course, blessed be the poor. Okay. And of course, verse 7 shows the, the dispensational difference. Uh, this is instruction in righteousness. And also this is reiterated in Romans chapter 3. Okay. Okay. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion, when the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people. Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Just one verse. Just one verse. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 20. <laughs> uh, let's read verses 19. Verses 19. On to verse 22. Wisdom, fear the Lord, strengtheneth the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. The mighty man which shouteth by reason of wine that comes from mystery Babylon. For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. I don't sin anymore since I saved. You lied. That's a sin. You're a liar. Shut up. Go away. Okay? Also take no take no heed unto all words, okay, that are spoken, lest thou hear, hear thy servant curse thee. For oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hast cursed others. Yeah, you were like you were a lost sinner before, walking according to this world, but then you came to the Lord on his terms broken and contrite and in fear of him you called upon his name and he saved you you're now a saved sinner different than that okay okay and Jeremiah chapter 9 Jeremiah chapter 9 Jeremiah chapter 9 see during the dispensation of the patriarchs the law was not given yet but like I said, like we have proven, okay, we have proven. You atheists want to debate that? Uh, I'm not going to debate with you. You want to argue that? That's your problem, okay? We are all born, every single one of us, no exception. We are all born with certain things in our hearts that we know are wrong. Adultery, murder, lying, okay? Sodomy. Male or female. Okay? We know. Murder. We know these things are wrong. But what happens? Man sears, not kills. You can't kill your conscience. Again, look at Abraham. Self-preservation. Someone who they say kills their conscience, like the murderer from Blackpool, uh, when it comes to his self-preservation, you'll see that conscience go up right in a hurry. Okay, like any one of the criminals that are in the jail down the road there. Okay, absolutely. But Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his, in his wisdom, fear of man. Neither let the mighty man glory in his, in his might. What have we already looked at? At the very beginning of this video, Psalm 144, who is the strength? Who is our strength? Who is our might? Okay? <clears throat> Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth glory in this, 
that he understandeth and knoweth me. That I am the Lord with ex which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. But how many profess they know God, but in works they deny Him. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, the big one. The big one. The big one. Jeremiah chapter 17. Of course, brother. Of course, brother. I, I, I get this when uh, my, uh, our brother from Croatia sees this. I, I bet you you were thinking, oh, you're going to go to the, uh, Jeremiah 17, aren't you? Yes, I am. Jeremiah chapter 17. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. The heart is deceitful and above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. And the scripture says that a fool trusts in his own heart. Let me, one second, let me find that for you. I didn't write that down. Proverbs 28, I had to look that up, beg your pardon. Proverbs 28, 26. Proverbs 28, 26. <clears throat> he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. And the fool says in his heart there is no God. But whoso walketh wisely shall be delivered. Walketh wisely, walketh according to what our Lord says. Okay? And how often do you hear, I, God knows my heart. He sure does, buddy. And it's wicked. It's uh, uh, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Oh, I know in my heart I'm a good person. I know I'm a good person in my heart. You're a fool. You say in your heart there is no God because you trust in yourself. You are your own God. You're a fool. You're a fool, little man. You're a fool, wicked woman. Because in your heart, God knows my heart. You're a fool. What is good? God is good. He is the only one who is good. He is the only one who is good. And and very quickly to um about this this thing about that dispensation of the patriarchs, because like I said, many people like to say that today is just how it was in the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is not true, okay? Uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the called out of Shem, the called, the chosen of Shem to establish the Hebraic line, okay? The faith that they had was in what God was going to do, okay? That's what their faith was in. And we will prove this by Genesis chapter 6. Well, first of all, Genesis chapter 6, Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 under verse 8, okay? Here's a little bit more about what God says of man in and of himself, okay? Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 on to verse 8. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. <laughs> if by now you followed along and you still think hey, God knows my heart and I'm a good person, I know in my heart, you, you, you're deceived. You're deceived. You're worshiping yourself. You're petting yourself. You are your own God. You are deceived. Okay? And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. God was a sinner. He had to repent. No. It, he turned. He, he changed his mind. He, he was sorry. Repented and grieved. In repentance, there is grief. 
There ought to be. In repentance of yourself, the grief comes as like, wow, I'm no good, but God is. And I've lived a lie all my life, thinking I was a good person, and I'm not. That's grievous. Okay? And knowing that because you're such a good person, Christ had to die on the cross, but yet you're a good person, huh? Yeah. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I had made them. Oh, and the stench of goodness I can smell right now. <laughs> and let's read verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace. What was Noah commanded to do? God, God saw what? That the thought of, uh, uh, that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually, that man's heart is nothing but evil? You, you're a good person. By whose standard? Your own, right? You're a fool. And the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But see, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And what did God tell Noah to do? God said to Noah, I'm going to destroy everything. You build a, an ark. Okay? So Noah, who found grace in the eyes of the Lord, acted on what God was going to do. That's the difference between the dispensation of today and the dispensation of the patriarchs. They are not the same. They are similar. But they are not the same. Beware of these dispensational people who tell you that they're the same. They are not. Because Noah would say, hey, God said, hey, I want to destroy all this. You build an ark. And Noah's like, yes, sir. And he did it. And he was preserved. Another example of this. Okay? Let's read. Uh, we were, uh, uh, I would, well, let's read verses 11 on to verse 14 here in Genesis chapter 6. Okay? Instead of me yabbering. Okay? The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. <laughs> but God promised that he wasn't going to destroy the earth by a flood. You know, you see the, the bow in the sky when it rains? That's God's promise. Okay? More proof of scripture that God is real, by the way. God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark. And thou shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. So, God, like I said, God said, Hey, I'm going to destroy everything. You make an ark. So, God chose you, God, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Yes, he did. Preacher of righteousness. But Noah had to have faith on what God, God said. I'm going to destroy everything. He said, make an ark. Noah acted on that faith. Okay? It was in what God was going to do. Okay? That's the difference. Uh, Genesis chapter 12, the easiest one to show you. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Again, Abraham, descended of Shem. Genesis 12, 1 and 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will shew thee. And I will make of thee a great nation and will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Unto a land that I will shew thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee. I will bless them that bless thee. I will. What he will do. That's the difference between the dispensations. You have to get this, uh, you have to get that right. You have to get that right. Because like I said, there are some of these dispensational uh, people out there 
who say, well, it's the same, and, and even the Christians. It's just like it was in, like it with Abraham. Okay? Just believe. Just believe. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Abraham, excuse me, Abram, 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 uh, so Abram was chosen of the Lord in the dispensation of the patriarchs, and his faith in what was what in God had to do. What about the other patriarch? Okay. What about uh, what about the other patriarch, um, Isaac? Uh, Genesis chapter twenty-six. Genesis. Wow, I overleaped that quite a bit. Genesis chapter twenty-six. Genesis chapter 26, verses 1 on to verse 5. And there was a famine in the land, beside the first famine, that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go, down, go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee. He's saying this to Isaac. And unto thy seed, I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in all and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. There was a, an element of obedience that was required within this dispensation. Obedience to what God said and what he was going to do. The law, under the law, it was faith and works. They had to have faith that God would honor them for doing what he had prescribed, written in the law. That's what the faith was in, in under the law, faith and works. Today, in this dispensation, we are saved by grace through faith. Okay, We come to the Lord, broken of our self-righteousness, contrite, knowing and you know taking it to heart. Yeah, it's my fault that he's on the cross. And in fear of the Lord, you call upon him. And he save you by his grace, if he will save you. Okay? Okay? Um, you don't, once he saves you, you're once saved, always saved. Sealed unto the day of redemption. Unfortunately, in order to go to heaven, you, you just have to come to the Lord on his terms. Unfortunately, you not doing one thing that he says for us to do today isn't going to affect your salvation. I say unfortunately because um, there are a lot of people who are actually saved, born again, converted, who do absolutely nothing as God commands us today in this dispensation, yet they're going to go to heaven. And see, the self-righteous who preach to you works like Mark the Messenger can't fathom that. That someone who is living like a devil, but yet came to the Lord on his terms and is actually saved, is going to go to heaven rather than them. Because what you do is not going to keep you saved or get you saved. And see, the faith today is in what God has done. That's the big difference. That's the big difference. You're saved, born again, converted to the church of the living God. God is not forcing you at gunpoint to do what is commanded us in the Pauline epistles. He's not. You are going to embarrass the Lord. You are going to shame him. Your life is going to be a wreck, a ruin, a misery, a shame. But you're still going to go to heaven. But there again, the honor of our Lord means nothing to you. See, in this dispensation of the patriarchs, Obedience was a part of it. See? That's the difference. And also, Jacob, uh, Genesis chapter 28. So, Noah had to trust in what God was going to do, and he did. After Noah, still the dispensation of the patriarchs, okay? 
the, the dispensation of the patriarchs is what this dispensation is known as. Okay, Abraham, Abram had to believe in what God was going to do. Got out of his country. Isaac, same thing. Jacob, Jacob, uh, uh, Genesis 28, verse 10 on to verse 15. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed. And behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest to thee will I give it and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this place. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee. Of. So, in the dispensation of the patriarchs, it was what God was going to do. Okay? Why, Brad, why did we go through that? Because, like I said, so many people want to, uh, especially Christians too, want to equate this time that we're in to the time of Abraham. It's similar, but it's different. But then again, what was the source of their goodness? Did not what God say to both Noah, to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob, did not what he, uh, God say unto them turn out to for good? Was it not good for them? Was it not good for his own glory? Yes. What was the source of the goodness of Abraham, Isaac, and and Jacob was it well God chose us I'm a chosen one so was it the goodness of himself no 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 see a lot of people and we talk about this and about about the dispensations um, Paul talks about the faith that he had and how he was justified by that faith well James talking to another dispensation where obedience is a requirement. Faith and works during that time of Jacob's trouble because the law is going to be back there. It's not going to be like the time of the patriarchs, the time of Jacob's trouble. The law is going to be reinstituted. Okay? Because the Jews are going to build their third temple. Okay? But the law is going to be reinstituted. During the time of Jacob's trouble, you have to have the faith, of, uh, uh, faith in Jesus and keep the law. Plus, if you take that mark of the beast, you're going to hell. Okay? But what was the source of their goodness? It was God himself. That was the source of their goodness. So. So. What is good? What is good? Is it you? Are you good? No, you're not. If you're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, God lives within you. And that is that. He himself is good within you. You yourself are not good. Because if you're good, why do you need uh, God on the cross to die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures? Why do you need his blood to wash away your sins if you're a good person in and of yourself? We are going to call it a day on this video. Okay? We have other things that we are going to go through, but we are going to do that in part two of this video. Like I said, this was going to be a two-part video. Part one is going to be recorded and uploaded today. Part two is going to be done, Lord willing, recorded and uploaded on Wednesday. So, 
where we're going to address more of the other things. We're going to get into the law and how see how the law is good. And then after the law, again, okay, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right? All right? So that is going to be it for this video. Um, brethren, pray for one another. There are so many of us who are suffering. Suffering for uh, uh, telling the truth. Suffering from lost uh, relatives. Suffering from false converts. Suffering from sicknesses. Suffering from loneliness, sickness, poor health. Pray for one another. Contact people you know. Contact them. A, a, a soft word, break at the bone. Talk with some people. Uh, get in contact with people. Pray for them. Pray for us. Like I said, the sun is out and it's bright out there. But there's nothing but storms and clouds. So, thank you so much for watching this if you do. And like I said, um, YouTube is now, uh, like they did four months ago, um, going after this channel, going after me for some reason. So, <laughs> just so you know, okay? So, please pray for us. Please pray for us. You, you're not going to stop me. This is not up to me. This is of the Lord, okay? This is what the Lord will have me to do. Oh, the devil and his angels... Oh, you can try, unless the Lord says so, these videos are going to keep coming. Because I work for Him. And this is not about me. This is about the Lord. So. Anyway, going to get this uploaded. Thank you so much for watching. If you do, I love you. See you in the next video.